yeah, that's where I was born. Singing, dancing, day and night, and oh, so strong. In the project, struggling through thick and thin. All I know is when I write, it comes with it. Hey. Hey, how y'all doing? This is the Arts Reporter, your Arts Reporter, Miss Mimi Johnson, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. Every Wednesday, it goes down right here at MimiJohnson.net. Um, today, we are giving um, so much love, um, as we do really every day, for um, domestic violence awareness with Tamiko Lowry. Everyone knows this beautiful lady comes on The Arts Reporter at least every other month and we discuss um, how we can fight and bring awareness to domestic violence. Um, and then we have our teen arts reporter, Miss Debria Hines. Hello. Yes, that is going to um, discuss a little later on about um, a, a situation with a friend of hers and um, that really got, you got some feelings going on about that. Don't make me cry. I can't lose the eyelashes. Oh, okay? Okay. 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 Right. But it um, seems to me, Miss Tamiko, yes. that no matter what age we are, from a teenager to a young lady like you to an older lady like myself, that domestic violence is affecting all of us in one way or another it does it affects everybody from every age age group every ethnicity every gender so it doesn't matter what your religion is it affects everybody yes um I, you know i saw so many tragic things this week uh on Facebook, I actually had to call my mother, mm -hmm. and I spoke with you, you for comfort. Um, not that anyone in my family is going through it, but just the fact that I did not understand how many children were being molested, raped, yes. and tortured. Um, and then this goes on to teenagers, to uh, adults that mm -hmm. are being abused. Yes. And so... Where do we go? What do we do? I mean, I guess one of the only things we can do is continue to pray. Uh, we definitely have to stay in the community and, and teach our children what a healthy relationship looks like. Um, a lot of children are being abducted, and it's just it's a sad situation. Um, a lot of the community organizations, a lot of them can't really help. I had a situation last Thursday where a lady um, contacted the Still Standing Foundation and she needed shelter. She had just been held at gunpoint, almost lost her life to domestic violence. And my myself and my assistant, we sat on the phone for over an hour and we called over 30 different shelters in the Atlanta area, um, outside of Atlanta, Metro Atlanta. Nobody had room. Is that the one that you posted on Facebook? Yes. And then we, I was like, we need to all put some money together. Um, and, it, and it hurts when you can't help a person because they look to you like, oh, you're the founder of the foundation. Well, why can't you help me? I don't have a shelter, but I have relationships with these different shelters. But well, we got to get you they, a shelter. I need a shelter. That is on my agenda. Girl, we got to get you like a 100,000 room <laughs> shelter. It hurts to have to turn people away. Yes. Um, and I think the way the system is set up sometimes... Um, people will fail because one of the shelters um they one of the questions was was the is the abuser in jail we said yes he went to jail today they said okay we have a bed but you're not eligible because you're not at risk you're not in danger because he's in jail so her thought was okay i don't have anywhere to go i'm at my neighbor's house my neighbor doesn't want me here because she's afraid my abuser's going to get out of jail and come and hurt them so she's like you got to find somewhere to go she doesn't have family here mm. she's like the only choice i have is to go back to the house and just put up, she was like, the only choice I have is to go back to the house and just deal with it. And I said, you're not going back to that house tonight. And so we were able to put her up in a hotel for a few days. Okay, and good. And she was able to get into the shelter. So right now, we're working on her, um, what, the, what her next plan is. So it's, she does not want to go back? To the abuser. No, she doesn't. So she, so yeah. they say that usually when uh, a woman says, I'm tired, it's the seventh time or the eighth yeah. time yeah, normally it's the seventh between three and seven times okay so this has been more than one time for, this specific for person, her it has been yes because i've been knowing her for i've been working with her for a while and this was the last time she went back and you watched like, her oh I'm, so yes. you've watched her go back yes. wow what is that feeling it's hard 
it's hard when you see people go back to their abuser. I had another young lady that went back to her ex-husband or her current husband after three months because she didn't have anywhere to go and she couldn't make it on her own. It's just jobs. It's hard. So what? So what happens to her? What happened? Well, the good thing is that he hasn't abused her again, and she's a little bit stronger now. She actually goes through some of our empowerment programs, so her self-esteem is kind of built up, but she's working on a plan of action, trying to get a job and so that she can sustain with her and her son on her own. Now, you have your teen mm -hmm. uh, situation, and you teach teenagers, and I also want to be involved with you in that and be mentors to teens yes. as I am to my arts reporters right. um, and but I want to, to be mentors to teens to uplift their dignity, their dignity and yeah. to make them stronger about themselves this young lady probably won't let no boy because right. she already Thank know okay. that she <laughs> loves herself and she yes. has an understanding right. but there are many teenagers that don't and so first i want to talk about your teen mm -hmm. uh um, programming okay. and then dabria has a story for us okay okay so we have our teen dating violence awareness workshops that we do um i go to different churches different youth groups i go to group homes and we put on teen dating violence awareness workshops and basically what that consists of is i'll go in and, and share my testimony um, I lost one of my best friends in high school to teen dating violence, so I share that testimony. And then we talk about healthy relationships and what does a healthy relationship look like? What does an unhealthy relationship look like? And how do I set boundaries? How do I say no and stick to it? And how do I get a young man to respect me? And so th those are the things that we talk about. And you would just be surprised at how many of these young people have already experienced it. Um, the Center of Disease Control says that one out of ten teenage girls between the ages of 13 and 17 have experienced some type of physical abuse already. And that's not emotional abuse or mental or verbal, but just on a physical aspect, one in 10 teenagers. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Yes, that is a lot. So with your programming, how do we um, participate for volunteers? Yeah, for volunteers and mm -hmm. what, you know, how, yeah, because I might say I want to, um, promote it or advertise right. and a lot of a lot of the young people they need to know that people in the community care about them or they need somebody to look up to you're an arts reporter so there may be somebody out there that's interested in communications or art yes so you could serve as a mentor yes and so we go out to the group homes where they say these little girls oh they're bad and they're this and they're that those are the young ladies that were in my fashion show yes and i work with them every other month i go to the group home and they're like miss tamiko can you be my mentor i want to do this or i want to do that so i try to find people to pair them up with yes in that area so a lot of them want to be on TV or they want to be a reporter. And so you could actually be a mentor I will. to them. I will be a mentor to them. Some of them, them want to be doctors. So I try to pair them up with a doctor or an attorney or somebody yes. like this. And they're not bad. They just need attention. And they need guidance. Yes. And they need for people to love them. And they need to have self-confidence. They do. They're not bad children. I don't think children, any children are bad it's us, the people that are guiding mm -hmm. them, that are the worst. Right. Because children are going to do what you allow them to Absolutely. do Absolutely. in a in a secure environment. I used to tell my kids, "Do that if you want to." Right, boy, <laughs> look at here. I don't care how big you get; and it's we, going down. So they, you have to put fear in their yeah. hearts and let them know that there are. Um, repercussions to their actions right right i mean you have to pay attention to them yes and you have to and spend pay. time with them if you're spending time with your child they don't really have time to go out and do other things if you notice when i do events or wherever i go you'll see my son with me he'll have his camera you'll see destiny she'll be doing stuff i know what they're doing all the time that's right that i mean there's no normally he would have been right here with me but he's working on an assignment for school because i was like you coming with me tonight you're gonna take he's my personal photographer yes <laughs> but um 
they're always with me and they are, they are part, they are a part of still standing. Yes, so. yes, and it should be that way. If, whenever I was in the studio, my kids were always wet as mm-hmm. a, as a young mother. Mm-hmm. I dragged them everywhere <laughs> um to shows, to the studio and and then we created our own situation right. of having our own studio mm-hmm. in the 90s we and then so from that point they were always with me in uh, doing what I do and I could always keep track mm-hmm. of them. You know, and now as they get into 13, 14, 15, they want to branch out. They want to go to the movies. (laughs) They want to go to the skating ring. Now what? So we still have to keep hold of them and let them know I trust you. But please don't do nothing stupid and don't let anybody do anything stupid to you. you. Absolutely. That's right. So now you have a situation, Dabria, with a friend. And so let's talk about that. You don't have to necessarily call her name, but let's just talk about the situation. Um, a very good friend of mine. So I've known her for about what, five, six years almost now. Um, we've been in the same class for a long time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sits right there. I'm right here. And, what? you know, like, we were just always together. And... We used to like text each other and call each other. And this year is like the first year that I'm not in the same school as her. So that was kind of a hard separation for us. But tell us why though. Tell us why, if you don't mind. You don't have to, but you know, people need to hear this story coming from a beautiful young girl like you because there's teenagers that are watching and you can help them to understand that they should not be abused. So you, do you want me to, to tell it? Basically, this young lady, her father was abusing her. Mm-hmm. Okay, her father was hitting on her. And, but what's the great thing about it? is that she was able to get out. She now lives with another part of her family and she's still here in the city where you can still be able to be in contact uh, with her and y'all can still love each other and be together, right? So even though there is a downside, but doesn't that make you wanna speak out more about this situation because when you're a voice to the voiceless, like you are today, you're a voice to all of those teenagers out there who will not speak up. And your voice is heard and your tears are, so, are seen and people are, are, are getting the, the, the point. Those teenagers that are watching and those abusers that are watching they're, they're knowing that they're wrong and that they're hurting people and the teenagers that are watching, they're knowing, hey, I got to tell somebody so that I can get out of this situation. So what, you, what you're doing today is being a voice for the voiceless. So how you feel about that? It kind of makes me feel better because it knows that it can bring awareness to other people who might be going through the same thing or you know, having to be put in situations that are uncomfortable for them, and it kind of just gives them that kind of comfort to know that, you know, other people are going through it too, Mm -hmm. and people have came out and stronger than they were before. That's right, and she's going to come out much stronger and continue continue to support her and call her and text her and let her know that you're there for her, just to encourage her every day because sometimes she might have flashbacks or think back and have those days when she's sad. So mm-hmm. send her a text message or give her a call every now and then just to let her know you're praying for her. That's right. So, Tamiko, give everyone your, you're on your way to an event, so we got to let you go. Because she is a, this is a really busy month. Every month is busy for you, but it especially is. October. Month is extremely busy. Of course. Unfortunately, we wait one month out of the year to dedicate to domestic violence. But we planning. don't have we to. We don't, but the community does. And so I'm very, very busy this month. Yes. But um, one of the things I definitely wanted to talk about 
um, upcoming for the Still Standing Foundation. Okay. Our Empowerment Zone workshops are kicking back off again in November. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have a class entitled The Seven Steps to High Self-Esteem because that is one of the reasons why a lot, a lot of women stay in these abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. And even after you're out, you still got to build yourself back up. So we have the seven habits um, of high self-esteem. Um, on November the 16th at Grace Church International, I'll be teaching a class okay. entitled freedom through forgiveness okay helping us to release those things that happened to us in the past yes. and also to forgive ourselves as read, as well as the person that hurt us so that we can move forward sometimes you can't move forward because you're harboring unforgiveness in your heart yes and you it's 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 a painful process but it's something that has to be released so i'll be teaching on that okay um and then the freedom conference freedom conference 2014 is going to be in april okay of 2014 freedom conference it's just what it says, freedom. So we're going to have different people teaching on different topics, freedom through faith, freedom through forgiveness, um, freedom through love. So uh, it's just going to be about freedom and breaking free. Okay. Um, and, again, you can find me on my website, the stillstandingfoundation.org. I'm on Twitter at Empowering Diva and also on Facebook under the Still Standing Foundation. Okay. Good. All right, so we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back after these messages. You're logged on to... Hello, Arch Reporter. You're Arch Reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurship, and inspirational life stories. We'll be right back. Oh, Mwah. Sweet. Meet the Williams family. The matriarch. Tyra. Hello, world. The baby. Mimi. Tyra. Hey, world! And their brother, Brandon. Hey, Mimi. Hey, Brandon. Tyra. The Siblings Sitcom. Hello, world. Welcome to Mark Square Studios, where we offer great prices and outstanding accommodations in one convenient location. Hot, hot studio. Make sure you do that. Fashion photographers and filmmakers now have an ideal space for professional and studio shoots. So photographers and filmmakers, sign up now and unbox your Mark Square membership today. Welcome to Mark Square Studios. Okay, you're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. This is our Purple is Life domestic violence awareness show. Um, what can I say? Uh, I, I, I got to give um, just a simple moment of silence for everyone that has been abused is abused and will be abused. Oh, wow. So, um, 
We have Steve Moore. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good. And we have our beautiful guest, Miss Sharon Willingham, today. And I met you at a function um, at a press release party and so then we got to talking and i was like i gotta have you on my tv show yes. and um you you have a really inspiring story so let's just start off with where you're from i'm from new jersey a native from new jersey okay and uh, how long have you been here in atlanta i've been in atlanta for about six years okay so what made you come here ministry God led me here from ministry and uh, to bring out my story about domestic violence. Okay, and your story is? I've been married for 27 years, and my violence started a couple months after I got married. And it's been going on for 27 years. To date? Yes. Not this date, but earlier, about March is when I stopped. Okay. So we've been back and forth. We went through a major divorce about se almost seven years ago. We started a divorce process. We stopped mm -hmm. for financial reasons. Okay. We'll talk about that more in detail. But we, we then decided that we wanted to stay together. But it never stopped. And so what is this? Is this physical abuse? And talk up just a little bit. Is this physical abuse or is it emotional, verbal? It's verbal physical, emotional, and sometimes even sexual. So where are you now in this place with him? Um, we have divorce seatings. We're in divorce. We're going for a divorce. Are you separated now? Yes, yes most definitely. Yes. What makes a woman stay there in all of that chaos? Because I can't understand. I was uh, just, just briefly... I am a domestic violence survivor, um, but I was, and I was um, uh, abused from like 17 to about 18 and a half. By 19, I was gone. So I was able to get out. So that's a year and a half for me. For you, 25 years, 27, 27 years, what makes you stay? Well, what makes me stay was a lot of number of reasons, and like a lot of other women, it's because financial reasons. We want to raise our children in a home with two parents. Okay. Uh, just a number. There's a list of reasons. But I would like to pose the question, why does he abuse? Yes, let's pose that question. And that is what my mission is, to find, to help, because we have generation of men that are coming up, which I have children myself, young men. And we need to find out why do they abuse. Okay. Did, have you found out? Yes. Okay. Because it starts in childhood. This okay. is a childhood learned behavior. And I think with the initiative, with everyone, community coming together, that we work and get these young men. And there are women that do abuse too. Yes. Very small uh, percentage. But mostly men. And find out why they're doing this. Okay. You know, the dynamics. Get them the help that they need. So what 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 would be some are they were they abused themselves and this is why they're yes. abusers? Yes. Yes. It's, okay. Yes, like my husband, it, he was abused when he was younger. So uh, that's the dynamics of it that he was abused. It's a learned behavior because you can choose not to abuse. Yes. Correct. Because you can you can create the behaviors to good behaviors. Yes. So he chooses not to have the good behaviors. So. And so you choose to walk away. Yes. Well, if I didn't, I probably would not be standing here talking to you because it's either two things that's going to happen. Either you walk away or you'll be dead. Mm-mm. Yeah. And you just too cute to be dead. You need to be walking on this earth, girl. Oh, God's grace. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and you have such a, a wonderful aura about you. So what are some things that you, you know, would like to just tell people and advise people or give people some inspiration? I advise people to speak out. If you have family members, if you yourself is going through domestic violence or violence, uh, even if you're a child, a young adult, please speak out. Tell someone there are so many resources out here for domestic violence and tell someone, speak out about it because it hides behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. I was a woman who was hiding, hiding behind it. I was in severe pain. Clo behind closed doors, 
I was just in pain. So I, I just strongly suggest, please reach out and speak out about it, please. Mm -hmm. And people can read. Now you have a book. Yes, I have a short story book that'll be, our launch date is in February. Yes. And uh, it's a collaboration of authors, it's an anthology, and so uh, that'll be uh, just a very short story of my domestic violence experience, and about April and May, the full, full book will come out, so it'll be more in details about what I experienced in my domestic violence mm -hmm. What's the name of the book? You can't tell yet. No. Okay. <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret. But that's okay. You can get in touch with the yes. arts reporter uh, at Gmail. Sure. And, and, and dibs. Yeah. At, you already know. I, I'm going to get the book cover first. Okay. Yes. So I can just blast it all over the world. <laughs> Give everyone your contact info so people will be able to get um, in touch with you. You can contact me at Sharon.Willingham at Yahoo.com. And you can also reach me on 770-820-7192. Um, I do answer phone calls. I do um, work with women who have experienced mm -hmm. domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I counsel them. And I, I'm very advocate about this and mm -hmm. pro-advocate. And um, I just want to let everyone know that everybody is affected by domestic violence. It doesn't just affect me, but it affects me, my children, communities mm -hmm. so when we all collaborate and get together we now can make a big awareness to this domestic violence mm -hmm. and, and it affects me as well because me hearing your story hurts my soul even though it's not being done to me anymore because I learned how to get out but your story it also has an impact on me and and um you know i i, I think i'm an activist for everything i can't Me think too. of anything Me i'm too. not an activist for yes and we should be yes. and we should be and we should speak out and bring awareness to everything that is and wrong and i am too yes. so mr moore i know you have one or two questions for miss sharon uh i'm awed mm -hmm. that you know not saying disappointed, but I'm awed that you stayed that long. Because, I mean, physical pain only lasts but for so long, but you have that emotional pain, the internal scars that no one can see. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, did you share your, your story, what was going on with family members, girlfriends, your pastor? Well, fa some family members knew. And um, when I say sometimes we had we had separated as well, so it was... It was times where we were separated, mm -hmm. um, and then we got back together. So, mm -hmm. um, but it was just a mindset, um, and also there's a lot of dynamics in reference to emotion, emotional, and um, so Tamiko she um, brought out some points about that. So mm -hmm. when you go into some dynamics, it's really um, that women. I really like to put it out there that we love too much. We really love at the cost of our pain because mm. we're we're trying to nurture this person really truly we're trying to nurture them to thinking that they're going to change thinking that if we can do all these different things that he will make it better mm -hmm. but at the end of the day he's not going to change okay and the only thing that will change him if he is accountable for what he does yes I, I do believe in um my mother always taught me self-preservation is the first law I never, um, I never put anyone before me, uh, the spirit, mm. the most high, that yes. spirit. I never even put my children before me. I took care of my children and nurtured my children and my husband, but I did not do it to the point that they drove me ragged. Never. I always got my rest. I always said, y'all are cleaning up the house today. I'm not doing all of this by myself. I've always put myself on a pedestal. I guess that's maybe why I look like this at almost 50 <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, but I think that if women, because you do that for yourself now, I can tell that you do that for yourself now. 
I know you do. And I've done that while I was married. Now, don't get me, don't get it wrong. Now. Okay. <laughs> but I want to say that mm -hmm. I've always kept myself up. That you would never, if you see me on the street, you would never knew that I was a domestic. As a matter of fact, when I tell my story, they're shocked. Right. <laughs> but because, the in, but, but but the inner man. Now we have to deal with the inner man. Yes. So yes, that's why yes. I say when you go home, it's a different story. Yes. Yes. And um and don't get me wrong, there were there were times in my marriage. There were good times. Of but course. The, bad, the bad weight out the good. I could say that. Mm. And so, um, but it goes back to the point that we, um, by God's grace, he gives us grace. Yes. And um, I, I stuck in there for 27 years, but ultimately made that choice and decided to leave. I, I, and I do believe that you hung in there for the 27 years, first of all, because I know you loved it and yes. still love this man you yes. can't turn off love mm -hmm. it's not like a light mm -hmm. where you can say eh, i don't love you anymore it doesn't work like that so um you first had to understand i love this person but i think i have to love i know i have to love myself more or mm -hmm. else you're going to die yes and i want to bring up a point because um when you said that you we love them, we do because um, the Bible brings about um, in Genesis where a woman desires to be to her husband. So mm -hmm. God's made us to desire to be and to that's love her husband. Great. So and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And um, but also He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. And um, you know He hasn't given us the spirit, spirit of, of fear. fear okay. But, uh, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So that means okay. that we shouldn't live in fear. No, we shouldn't. So we, so that in terms, we do live in fear, but mm -hmm. uh, we also make a decision. A decision when we leave, you know, to leave because of the situation. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so I would say that I probably am the a veteran <laughs> in this, but I would recommend mm. no one ever to stay in domestic violence this long, at all. Yes, because um, wow, I'm just I'm just thinking back 27 years ago, and up to up to just you know when you decided to to leave and all of that pain that you went through for all of those years, and how here you are now a thriver. Yes. Smiling. Of course. Just yeah. as cute as you want to be. She's <laughs> as cute as a button. You, she, you see her on TV. She's cute on TV. But when you see her in real life, she look like a little, a big, a big little Barbie doll, really. Like, <laughs> so, recommending to people that are being abused no don't stay there that long what would be the first the the first initial mm, i gotta go this is this is not this is not right well one thing is i would say how does he hold a conversation and how does he react when he you say something that he doesn't like and that reaction mm. knows how he can control his temper okay and then um, do things to make his temper rise. Really? Because you'll know how he reacts in terms or say something. I'm saying say something and see how he reacts. Is he reacts different to it, then you know he has a calm spirit. Okay. But, um, but those are, there are some red flags in terms of you can um, just ask him um, different situations about mm -hmm. his past. Okay. And... Um, most of the time, they're manipulators, rape manipulators. Uh, there's a lot of dynamics in terms of red flags. Um, I would I would suggest going on to the domestic violence hotline okay. and getting information and getting these signs because there's all different types of signs. Mm -hmm. And I, I I can name a lot of them, but I know I've been through all of them. Name five. Um, one sexual. Uh, one, um, that's if sexual. Hollering, if he's hollering, if he's hollering at you or um, calling you all different types of names, uh huh. Um, if he's, um, a lot of times they're they're trying to they're stalking you. Uh, just want to know where you're at um, all the time. Um, uh, 
very sensitive to who you're with, mm -hmm. um, controlling, mm -hmm. a lot, lot of controlling. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep that in mind. I'm, I'm, I know that the man that whoever God wants me to be married to again, and unfortunately, I lost my husband in 2002, and he was um, a, a gentle giant. Mm -hmm. um, I, in fact, we, we, when we used to argue, I used to be like, nah, 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 nah. he'd be like, really? He'd be looking down at me like, really? Okay, um, so, uh, okay, come on over here and sit down, because I've got this spicy thing about me um, when I'm... Uh, you know, want to get my point across, um, but not so much too argumentative, but you know, we have, every marriage has arguments, but not to the point that you are abusing each other, so, and with the arguments, and um, so I know that um, I'm going to be blessed with another husband, and I'm sure that he's not going to be somebody that's going to uh, be um, abusive, because... I'm going to get to learn that person for some years and understand who that person is. Now, that's another thing is that, so how long did you know your your uh, ex-husband before you decided to, well, how long was the courtship? For two years. For two years, so that means mm -hmm. there was no sex, just, just, just going out, having a good time, getting to know each other. That's court. That's true courtship. <laughs> that I, I because must, even I must in admit that it was sex. <laughs> okay, so that's, let's let's not worry about that. Let's not think about that. But uh, let's say let's say um, you know with you dating and not not being not being um, living together, it, you know just going out. Yes. So that was two, two years. years. Two years. And okay. Then after that, I got married. Then you got married. Mm -hmm. In those two years, was he, did you see any red flags then? I did. One time, um, he was in the basement. As I began to go back, he was in the basement and um, in our home. He actually, he was there with me and my father at the time. Okay. And so he was in the basement and he um, hit his head against the wall. And I came down and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, nothing. So that was the sign of him dealing with anger. And so, yeah. Did he tell you why he did no, that? he never told me why. Yeah. Can you find out and let me know? I mean, you still talk uh, to him, right? Well, there's a lot of dynamics, and I will talk more about it in my book because it's a lot, too. He was in the military, and there's a lot of things that went on yes. with that, too. Yes. So um, it's, it's really... Um, uh, it's a lot of dynamics mm -hmm. in terms of that. And so um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing where... I've experienced so much that uh, I tell you, it's God's grace that I'm here. Mm -hmm. It really truly say. is. I believe is. that. I yeah. believe that. We're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back right after these messages. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. We'll be right back.
All right. So look, Miss Sharon, um, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. December 11th, we do it again for um, Purple is Life. And I want to make sure we get you on so we can continue your story. Okay, so um, let everyone know. Okay, you're an you're a, a activist. Um, a teacher, motivator speaker, uh, just there to um, help and assist women and give them direction, mm -hmm. provide them the resources and information that they need and, um, and how to get in contact um, if they um, want to get out of their situation. And um, men, too, because there is some men mm -hmm. that are abused as well. Yes. And so we do want to cover all areas of um, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, and give everyone your um, contact information once you again. You can reach me at Sharon.Willingham at Yahoo.com mm -hmm. or 770-820-7192. Okay, and before we go real quick, Mr. Moore, are we going to go ahead and go into your corner with right. the common sense? Common sense corner. Now, everyone remembers the story of Marissa Alexander, the uh, Jacksonville wife and mother of three who just gave birth, that was abused by a husband mm -hmm. who admittedly, uh, he admitted that he abused his other three former wives, girlfriends, okay. yes, five children, uh, that he abused her. Well, this woman tried to flee from him, ran to the bathroom, he broke down the door, Make it short, she got to her registered firearm uh -huh. and fired a shot into the ceiling. Okay. But it took the jury 12 minutes to convict her and sentence her to 20 years. But thanks to all the people, and I want to give you big ups for everyone that signed the numerous uh, petitions yes. to force the state of Florida to give this woman a new trial. Okay. Now, the uh, appellate judge who signed the decision found that he stated that the judge wasn't wrong, but he was wrong in instructing the jury on self-defense. Okay. So she has been granted a new trial. Good. And once again, I would like to give that appellate judge a hand up for stepping up, in which a lot of men don't do. And a lot of brothers out there, if you're abusing your woman, seek help. Yes. It, the friends that everyone knows someone that hits their girlfriend. Yes. You need to step up. Right. And counsel your friend. Because there's organizations for women, but we need organizations for men. Men. To seek, get help. Men helping men to yes. break that generational curse. Mm -hmm. If you feel you have to hit something, put on some gloves and go into a gym. And go ahead and box one of them other men. Exactly. Or beat on a heavy or, bag. Or beat on the bag. You know? Yeah. Or just go somewhere in the woods, and if you're afraid of hearing somebody scream, go into the woods and beat on yourself. Because there's nothing worse than the man that beats on the woman. The woman is God's gift to us. Not your car. Mm -hmm. Not your jewelry. <laughs> but common sense. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let, me, let me get this judge's name and yes. find him again. Uh, judge James Daniel. Okay. He said, we remand for a new trial because the jury instruction on self-defense was erroneous. Thank you so much, Judge Daniel. Now, you just have to grant this woman bond so she can get yes. out and see her children. She's yes. been locked up since 2009. Wow. Once again, Judge Daniel, one glove, my brother. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> we'll be back right after these messages. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. Be right back. Meet the Williams family, the matriarch, Tyra, hello world, the baby, Mimi, Tyra, hey world, <laughs> and their brother, Brandon. Hey Mimi. Hey Brandon. Tyra. The siblings sitcom. Hello world.
Yes, yes, you're tuned in to Arts Reporter, your Arts Reporter, Miss Mimi Johnson, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. How you doing over there, Miss Dabria? Good, good. You doing good? All right. You know you just inspired me. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're just such a wonderful, wonderful arts reporter. We're going to shout out to your friend, and we're going to know that she's okay. All right? Great. Um, now, Miss Angela Carswell. Hi. Now, we need quiet on the set, please. And Miss Angela Carswell... You know, y- y'all know she's one of my loves. I've been working with her. How long have we been working together it's been now? About a solid year. We're coming up on a year anniversary. Now. No- November third, mm-hmm. we yeah. did. Our, you you cast me for Rimshot Urban Musical, which yep. we're doing it again. Yes. The yes. 23rd, November 23rd, exactly at the Rockdale County Auditorium. Right. That's in Conyers, Georgia. It is. Okay, and go. I'm excited. I know. I'm excited. <laughs> we really, really care about human trafficking. Awareness. Yes. Um, as you know, on my radio program about two years ago, I interviewed a human trafficking survivor named Chong Kim. Yes. And Chong Kim is a victor and an activist on human trafficking. Yes. And I wasn't even aware before I interviewed her that this was even going on. Right. And so consequently, my entire life changed. I decided to do something real major in order to bring awareness to it. And a theatrical production using the performing arts is the best way to bring awareness to an issue that people usually avoid Mm -hmm. you know for people that do know something about it they don't want to talk about it it's so heavy and it's such a grave societal issue and it's shrouded in silence which actually fuels it right because no one wants to talk about it right i said okay well let's get this message out somehow to where people can actually get a firm understanding of what it's about let me tell you when they come to see rimshot urban musical they don't watch human trafficking unfold on stage that would be miserable. Mm-hmm. Instead, what they get is a story about a young girl who's actually being kind of manipulated by these music industry executives yes. to do things that compromise her moral compass, wear less clothes, more lewdness in your lyrics, you know, do what these popular artists are doing mm-hmm. nowadays in order to be relevant. And meanwhile, they don't have any intention of paying her. So really, there's a parallel there to what human trafficking is. Yes. And so that's the way that we deliver the message. We make it appropriate for all ages, and it particularly speaks to our teenagers. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love, I love um, the whole cast. Our mm-hmm. cast may start from about five years old mm-hmm. to the teenagers, mm-hmm. to the preteens. Mm-hmm. Pre- then we have teenagers. Then we have young adults. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, y'all know I'm always the oldest. I, oh, I even be older than the directors, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. I love it. Wiser is a better word. Well, the oldest and. And well, I don't Wiser. know because you teach Wiser. me you teach me a lot of stuff that I need to know, like about human trafficking. Like I did not know mm-hmm. that the um, airport that is right down the street from mm-hmm. my fifteen minutes from where I live, right in my backyard, human trafficking is going on mm-hmm. on a daily basis mm-hmm. every minute of the day. Always, always. Fulton and Fulton Industrial is a major throwaway for human trafficking. It literally happens right in front of people's face. But the problem is people don't recognize that that's what it is. They think that when they see these victims, that these victims are voluntarily prostituting themselves. Well, let's back up a little bit because many of these victims are underage. So why aren't we talking about that, first of all? Right. And second of all, the vo- the whole prostitution situation, it's, this thing is happening by force. 
Chong Kim, we're going to jump back to her because she was just in town a couple of weeks ago. Yes. We had an event to honor her called Inspiration. There's a film out. It's on Netflix, and it's also in Redbox called The Abduction of Eden. And it tells her story about how she was literally tricked into it by someone who was posing as her boyfriend. Right. You know, he charmed her. He says, come on, I want to take you down to Florida and meet my parents so we can elevate the relationship. And she gets down there. He drugs her, and she wakes up in captivity. And literally, she was in a domestic human trafficking ring and was that way for two years. The thing is, again, people don't realize that these girls are being forced, and it happens to boys, too. Yes. Right? And um, there is no way to really differentiate the difference between prostitution and traffic victims. What would you tell this young lady mm -hmm. and give her advice and give our teen viewers advice? Okay, absolutely. The very first thing that I would tell you and I would tell all of our teenagers is that, first of all, anybody that makes you promises doesn't automatically mean they're in control. There are many people that are out here that will give you these big pipe dreams and tell you all these things that they can do for you. And they might invite, invite you out for modeling gigs or they might say, oh, you're beautiful enough to be an actress or a model. And then when you get there, all of a sudden they want you to take off your shirt or they might want you to lift up a little bit or pose a certain kind of way. That's really how they start to groom you. You've got to be very careful and make sure that whenever you do anything that you're with an adult that you know and trust and have them make sure that the situation is honest and that no one's trying to trick you into anything that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Also, what I tell the young people is everything that you see in the music videos, on all of these major networks, on mm -hmm. these award shows, I'm not going to even call no names, but it is what it is. Mm, Lord, right. help us. Right, right. What I'm saying is that you do not have to identify with those artists necessarily and say, okay, well, this is what it must have to be in order for me to be an entertainer and to be relevant. If you really listen to the lyrics in our songs... If you look at the way that we style ourselves in our music videos, it, it breaks my heart. Yes. And it's not necessary. Yes. So just know that your beauty should come within and that you're most beautiful when you're not revealed and people aren't distracted by what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And they're not distracted by the lewdness of your lyrics. Yes. If you have a beautiful voice or the ability to dance or do spoken word or perform, use that for the good yes. of the order. And make sure that you can be proud of what you do. Yes. You know, I tell my sons, I said, okay, now look. So you all off into this little rap stuff, right? And this is your whole thing. And I know you're 16. Okay, it's cool to be, you know, woo woo. Write down the lyrics for me and read them to me. If you can't do that, you don't need to be listening to That's it. That's right. Because it's programming you to think that all of this and all this craziness is normal and it's okay. It's not. And it's not okay. It's not. We go there in the play. No one else is bold enough to say it because they figure, okay, well, the industry, entertainment industry just is what it is. We can make a change. We can stand for a change. Yes. We have to. Yes, we do. We just have to. We do. We're going to go to a commercial break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back right after these messages with Angela Carswell, Rimshot, Urban Musical <laughs> for Life. <laughs> be right back. Middle Georgia Productions and ATL Radio presents Rimshot Urban Musical, nominated ATL's Hottest Stage Play 2013. Rimshot Urban Musical integrates the works of a dynamic group of positive and innovative musicians, artists, scribes, and dancers while conveying an engaging, educational, and stimulating message. How far would you be willing to go for fame? Fortune. Things aren't always what they seem. The highly anticipated Rimshot Anniversary Celebration is on November 23rd at 7 o'clock at the Rockdale County Auditorium in Conyers, Georgia. To secure your tickets today, visit www.rimshoturbanmusical.com. Follow the movement on Facebook at Rimshot Urban Musical or call us at 678-306-3616. Rimshot Urban Musical. Performing arts for social...
magic moment when we make some kind of magic you and me I feel laughter in the waves rushing toward us as children play will be in my heart yeah so miss angela carswell yes, um i i gotta say that i'm looking so forward um i have tickets for rimshot urban musical november 23rd what time is that 7 p.m 7 p.m mm -hmm. at rockdale county auditorium mm -hmm. in um conyers georgia that's right and you can um get in touch with me at the arts reporter at mm -hmm. gmail.com for your tickets i'm doing 20 tickets at 140 dollars. that's seven dollars per ticket you can't go to the movies for that okay as a matter of fact, the face value of the tickets is cheaper than a real than a movie. Right. And I promise you, you'll get much more. You'll get Mimi Johnson. Yeah, honey, I'm gonna be singing my heart out, and I'm getting. I, I was singing um someone else's a cover tune, but now I get to sing mm -hmm. one of my original songs. Yes. Now, so I'm looking so forward to that, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. <laughs> you have to come and see, but you already know I'm gonna sing my heart out. Mm -hmm, so give mm -hmm. everybody, you, you know, just some a minute of some information and Absolutely. contact. Absolutely, Rimshot Urban Musical. We're all about performing arts for social change. Mm -hmm. Just remember that we are at rimshoturbanmusical.com. You can follow us on Twitter at official rimshot. Please like our Facebook page because I put a bunch of statistics and information about the cause and about the epidemic on there, and I also mix in promos for all of our major events. Mm -hmm. If you live in the Lithonia area. We're going to have a promo for the show on on November 2nd from 2 to 4 at Stonecrest Mall. So you got to come out for that. Um, Rimshot Urban Musical. We're any and everywhere. If you Google us, you'll find us somehow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The Arts Reporter has been such a major, huge friend to our project. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. We're saving lives. Yes. We're saving yes. lives. And we're deterring these children from ending up in these situations. Yes. And I love that. And mm -hmm. I love the children so much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love my own so dearly. And then to reach out to no, want other children to be safe. Yes. And Lord, I am going to ask you that these children that are being abused, please let them be numbed. And please let them be secured and be able to get up out of those situations. Mm -hmm. We're going to need that from you. I don't ask you for that much. I don't ask the God for nothing. <laughs> My prayer is thank you. Mm -hmm. But I will demand and ask for their protection. Yes. The children, the voiceless. You're doing your part. The voiceless mm -hmm. ones. I have so much compassion for them. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to bring you on. Because human trafficking is a part of domestic violence. It is. It absolutely is. We're going to go to a commercial break. And then we're going to be up out of here. We'll be right back. Mwah. Okay, so we'll need... Give it all to you. Give it all to all.
I'm not worried at all. I'm never out of time. No time for games, no different name. I plan for everything to be the same. And it's a shame. Why people hurt you in a different way. So I can't let that get me down. No. Alright, alright, well we're getting ready to get up out of here and I um, just want to give like just about maybe 15 seconds of some last words. Alright, thank you guys for tuning in tonight to the Arts Reporter and I see you next Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I honor all the domestic violence survivors and I appreciate them for bringing awareness. Again, I'm Angela Carswell with RimshotUrbanMusical.com. Check us out. Yes. And I'm Sharon Willingham and... Please speak out if you have anyone you know that is involved in domestic violence or violence. Please speak out. Yes. Brothers, if you put your hands on your women, do it in a loving and caring way. I'm a photographer. I like photographing beautiful women. Uh, come on. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know I am the arts reporter. Just so blessed and highly favored. And I thank all of our viewers. I thank my cast, my team, my guests. Um, I'm so grateful to the Most High for just giving me the opportunity to fulfill the need of the platforms that we need for awareness. So log on to MimiJohnson.net, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. And on three, we're going to say tartar. One, two, three. Tartar! Tar -tar. Meet the Williams family. The matriarch. Tyra. Hello, world. The baby. Mimi. Tyra. Hey, world! <laughs> and their brother, Brandon. Hey, Mimi. Hey, Brandon. Tyra. The siblings sitcom. Bye. Hello, world. Bye.